There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Vasily. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc, and And it starts now. Hey, everybody, we want to welcome you to The Psychic and The Doc, Doc, Psychic and The Doc. Uh, Thank you for tuning us in, turning us on. This is one of our live call-in shows. We want to make sure we say that to everybody because Jacob will get a lot of calls asking, is this a live call-in show? It's a live call-in show. We're also taking your comments and questions on facebook.com uh, slash transformation talk radio. Uh, Mark is my esteemed colleague here. And boy, are we having fun. But if you know Mark, you know he's a best selling author. You know he is that person that so many people go to when they want to hear the messages from spirit, from people that have crossed. Uh, call it what you want, but this is what he does. And he does it so well that I just get to be in awe as I listen to him. And and he says, who is that that has the pink polka dots? And I'm like, okay, they are never, <coughs> ever, ever going to say they know that person. And what do they say? Oh my goodness, it is my Now, why? Because this is what he does. This is his gift. This is his talent. And for so many people who have been in so much pain year after year after year, he provides them with the book to help them understand. Yeah, Afterlife Frequency. He provides them with readings. This holiday season, this holiday season, this is the one where we think we are back to normal, but we don't feel that way. Yeah. Today's show is for all of you. It is the gift. You know, it's the gift to be uplifted. That's what today's show is about. And for many of us, that is the gift. And that doesn't mean that we're not in a place or in a world where we're having tough times. I just got off the phone with Linda's sister and we were just talking. And I said, Karen, she said, How are you? How are things going? And I said, you know, we had a really good day today, but I said, I don't know that people, I think people really are on the edge and some people have crossed over, um, crossed over the edge uh, or off the ledge. And she looked at me and she kind of said, well, you know, like, like explain what you mean. And I said, look, whenever you are under so much stress, so much pain, whenever you can't put one side up or the other, You will take it out on people that you think are to blame. And if you're in business like Mark and I, it comes at us in the strangest ways. You know, it comes at us from people that say the darndest things. And as a team here, all of us, Jacob, myself, Linda, Kim, we have been through this before. And what I've come to have is compassion because I will never understand until I think about my own life's journey and I think about my mom, I will never understand until I tap back into those experiences, what it must be like for some people that feel that the only way out is anger retribution, right? Oh yeah. That is their way out. But if you have anything other than compassion for them, you're not gonna help them, right Mark? I, I totally agree. And for the people that are going to call in, and our call in number is 1 800 930 2819, what makes this show unique? Yes, I will um, 
connect callers with their loved ones in spirit. But what makes the show unique is that a lot of times messages may not be readily um, apparent to the recipient. It could be a metaphor or you're kind of on the spot and you don't quite understand it. And what makes this show unique is Dr. Pat, because I've been working with her for years now. And she'll say, well, wait a second to the caller. Did you ever think it could mean this? And it's really important, especially in the spontaneous and these mini readings, to have an objective analysis by a, a third party. And Dr. Pat, being a behavioral psychologist and a damn good one, also understands the metaphors because I've I've had this described um, when when a message comes in. I always tell people, don't think, feel. And I've had, and you've said this too, Dr. Pat, this is like dream interpretation. Yeah. So if a spirit transmits to me a concept and somebody's like, oh, I'm not sure. And you say, well, um, do you think this could relate to something that may have happened to you when you were a child? And the client goes, oh my God. <laughs> and then they make the connection. So that is what makes the psychic in the doc a very unique show. And it's such a privilege to work with Dr. Pat and with the Transformation Network because we're here for, for all of you. So everybody, um, we are taking calls. we got a great yeah. team. we got Rocky, Linda, Jessica. We've got Jacob, our, our man on the, the phone lines. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, it's it's um, this is what Dr. Pat and I do. This is our ministry. Yeah. And this is the holiday season. This is a tough time for people. You know, yeah. I mean, we all wish... I mean, honestly, I really wish at least for a week I could live in a Hallmark movie, you know, where everything was wonderful and everything was Christmassy. And then, you know, nobody had, you know, you know, the biggest, you know, crisis is, oh, the turkey's a bit dry, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's not reality. And oftentimes the holiday season reminds us of what we don't have in our life, particularly those who we love. So that's yeah. why we're here. Yeah. And please, what we want to say to you is that sometimes people will do the darndest thing and they will do things that could affect your bank account, that could affect your heart, that could affect your relationships. And this show today is to help find the gift in the uplift. That's what we're here to help you with today. But we, Mark, trust us when we say, Mark and I do not live with our heads in the sand, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you know, that's the other thing is is uh, a lot of a lot of my psychic colleagues, and with all due respect, you know, they live in this granola unicorn world where everything's wonderful. I've been a criminal defense attorney and a prosecutor. I've stormed houses with the SWAT team. I've dealt with cold blooded murderers. I mean, I've been there, and Dr. Pat. Um, yes, you have your PhD, but you got your real education oh. on the streets. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. and and having a really tough time yeah. and and coping with suicide very yeah. close to you. So and let's mention that. Yeah. Let Let's just take a moment to mention that because, you know, it's it's heavy on our minds. It's in our hearts. Mark, why don't you mention what we were talking about before we came on? We were talking with Jacob about it. Yeah, we're talking to Jacob about oh, was it was it Twitch? Um, he's uh, the, the was the, the real famous dancer that was a real good friend of Ellen DeGeneres. Yep. yep. And he was found dead uh, by suicide uh, this week, and you know he was loved by a lot of people. And it's very easy to get angry at him and say, how could he do this? He had children, he had a wife, he was young, he was a dancer. And suicide affects everyone. I mean, I did a reading, uh, I believe it was last weekend, it was a, a group online session. And there was a woman whose life partner died by his own hand. And after the session, she was angry that he wasn't miserable in spirit. Uh, and I realized that he'd only died a few months ago and she's in that pit of trauma, understandably so. Mm -hmm. And she wanted him to be miserable too. And, and when spirits come through, they're so at times, I don't want to say annoyingly happy, but you have to realize that once a person leaves the material world, you, you revert to pure energy. Now, yep. 
when we say this, and Dr. Pat and I always re reiterate this, yes, li eternal life is a wonderful thing, but we're here in the material world, and we're not in any shape, form, or fashion encouraging anyone to go to the other side because it's better. And yeah. I believe the uh, suicide is it eight nine nine. I think you, you hit eight nine nine. Well, I want to give everybody yeah. the yeah. National Suicide Prevention yeah. Lifetime line. I want to give this number out. <clears throat> yes. Um, it, it, everybody should have this. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is eight hundred two seven three talk. Eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Or you can text the crisis uh, uh, hotline. You text crisis. Uh, 741741. Now, why are we saying this? Look, you just never know. No. I could never have predicted that would have been the path of my mom, not in a million years. And you can look at a situation, and that's why we are doing the show today, because we have to be able to help people step in the walkway of hope. You know, we have to do that for a show like this. It doesn't mean we don't, it doesn't, it saddens us. At least for me, it saddens me to hear about this. Yeah. But that makes us want to be here even more for all of you. Right? I think we should yeah. go to the phones, Mark. What do you think? I'm ready. Jacob. All righty. First up, we've got Allison calling in from Napa Valley. Hi there, Allison. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Pat. Hi, Mark. How are you guys? We're really good. How can we help you today? So good to hear you. Okay, Mark, I know you're going to hate this question with a burning hellfire, but I heard someone else ask it a couple weeks ago, so I was going to follow their bad example <laughs> and ask it too. Um, can you tell me anything about when my house is going to sell? <laughs> okay. I'm going to help you before he helped you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's not going to be able, he's, he's not a psychic predictor. He talks to dead people. Okay. Yeah. Now, let me rephrase I thought it. the dead people might know. The de that's why, exactly. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get Mark to tune in to somebody that may be able to help you. Now, it may not be the answer you're looking for, but it may be the answer you mm -hmm. need. Does that make sense, Mark? It, it does. Yes. In, in when approaching spirit communication, um, and because it's the Christmas season, I get to say this, this is not sitting on Santa's lap with your wish list of what you want. The other side's gonna transmit I to know. you what you need to hear. And that may not include when your house is going to sell. So you have to keep an open mind. And people are like, well, I want to know this and I want to know that. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, we may as well ask them for winning Powerball numbers, okay? And and I always tell people yeah. they, may give, they may give us numbers, but they may not tell us when those numbers are going to come out. <laughs> so we may get a combination <laughs> of six numbers, but they didn't mention they're going to come out 14 years, eight days, and four hours from now either. So, <laughs> all right. Um, hold on. I'm getting a male energy coming through, and he feels like, um, Allison, that he could be, he feels like he may be connected to you through your mom's side of the family. And, um, but what that means is he is on the generation that would be like the, um, a parent, an uncle. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your mom's brother or something, but there's some connection to him uh, with your mom. And what I'm getting mm -hmm. uh, with his cause of passing is my lungs really, really hurt. In fact, I'm feeling my sternum hurts, my lungs hurt, um, and I'm feeling a nauseated sensation. And what this indicates to me is he was pretty ill prior to passing. And with the rib cage and the sternum, this feels like he may have had open heart surgery at some point. Now I'm getting pains in my back, which would be, you know, consistent with, with all of that. Um, let me hold position here. Does any of this ring a bell with you? I am not sure. It could be her stepfather, but um, I'm not, I'm not really ringing a bell at this moment. Uh, okay. Did he, did he have heart problems or open heart surgery? Do you know? 
I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's see what this man wants you to know. This guy used to drink. Man, I'm seeing drinking, drinking. So don't worry so much about how he's connected to your mom. But there's a guy um, connected on on the parent, possibly grandparent level, that really used to down him. Is that, is that making any sense now? Um, no, more of the women were drinkers. Okay. So well, I'm not I'm sure. Still- I'm sticking with this. There's a guy here and he keeps showing me lots okay. of drinks. I don't want to, I don't, here's the thing in a one-on-one reading, I got time to to spend with you on this. Yeah. Let's talk to him about this. This is your mother's father. This is your mother's father. Could be the stepfather, but he says father. And there's something about okay. a lot of cherries. Now, let me go through this before we respond. Cherries are an interesting sound. Cherries could mean there could be a name like Sherry or Jerry. But a lot of times, Allison, when I get cherries, I think of the month of February because of chocolate covered cherries and Valentine's Day. So he is pulling my attention into the month of February. Now, this could mean two different things. This could mean a significant birth, death, anniversary or event, which may be connected to you, Allison. Okay, don't worry about how it applies to him. Could be connected to you or to somebody close to you, either in this world or the other side. And the other interpretation, it may be the answer to your question that perhaps it will be February when your house will sell. So that's what the message is. Okay, that would be great. What do you think? What do you think of that? Um, I hope so. Okay, so I want to give you a little tip. You know, you have to take what Mark says now and you have to really spend some time so you can lean into it because that was a lot of information and a lot of it's really good. Mm -hmm. And it depends because maybe it's not cherry. Just saying, because you only knew this. You know this. Maybe it's berry. Yeah. Maybe, right? Okay, so- what you have to do with something like this is you really have to let it play from your your mind to your heart. And I get a sense you really got it up in the brain okay, but you got to let that into your heart a little bit because I don't think you wanted that answer and I think you're going to cut off the real answer. Does that make sense? It does, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a lot of information he gave you, but you got to allow it to get in. And once you allow it to get in, mm-hmm. you're going to get your answer. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Pat, you're of Italian heritage. Should we tell her about the St. Joseph statue and selling a house? <laughs> you can see from your reaction. <laughs> all, right, there, all right, there's an old Italian tradition. It's old Italian. Yep. Old Italian tradition. Uh, San yep. Jose, St. Joseph. You can go to a Catholic supply store and they actually sell them. There's yep. these little statues of St. Joseph and it gives the instructions and you, uh, you bury it in front of the piece of property that you want to to sell and there's a prayer like saint joseph help help yep. me sell and That's let right. me tell you something i have told um i've heard from so many people that oh rocky just texted it worked for me <laughs> it does work okay. i know it, it, it works <laughs> i'm telling I'm you i'm going to the store right now and i'm gonna get one i've never it. heard of that i need it but but don't forget to look up the prayer because you just can't bury it you gotta okay. do like the thing with it I, believe me, there are so many of these, uh, what do I want to call them? Traditions, right? You know, uh-huh. and, the, and and the whole bury the thing. Somebody, I had a, a feng shui expert tell me, I don't even know if this is true, but there's a place from when you look at your house where you want to bury it. And so in the uh, Bagua, the, I'm going to get this wrong. You got, You guys can call me. I think it's the right corner of the house is your prosperity corner. So if you want to like get a good deal on it, you bury it over there. But there are other places in the house that maybe that's not the priority for you. Have some fun with this, okay? Yeah. And, and it's okay. nothing else. It has not it's, been fun. But... Well, it, you're putting a positive intention into oh, it. Oh, yeah. You got to have yeah. fun with this. You got to erase all that not been fun stuff because, you know, I'm telling you, when you put that thing in the ground... You better have the right energy. Just saying. Okay. Okay. Go I'm going to work All on right. that. Okay. Um, we're going to. All right. Thank you, guys. 
going to send you a lot of stuff. I got to tell you, you know what I thought of with Barry? Okay, I'm going to tell you. Here, it's weird. Mark, this is going to be weird. Okay. I don't know why I thought about the berries on a holly bush. I don't know why. I never think of my holly bush because it never gets berries. So something when you said the berry, I saw this holly bush. You know, holly, is it a bush or a tree? I don't know what it is, but you know what I mean? Oh, you know, yeah, when yeah. I say holly? Yeah. yeah. Do, you have, do you have any, where you live? Napa? She's in Napa, Napa Valley. Yeah. So I bet holly like, grows there. Not, Everything I grows there. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing I was struck by is when Mark starts to talk about those things, the other thing that hit me, okay, you want to hear, I don't drink, but here's what hit me. There's that wine and there's a great commercial. And I was so disappointed because the winemaker was not a woman, but he sold it. It is the best <laughs> one. I don't drink. So you, you all from the program do not call me on this. The, the great commercial. There's one commercial where the three women are walking in and they're all like dressed up. And the one woman's in the front and she pops the cork and the other one catches it. And it's a wine. And it's and and so when he was talking about that, I couldn't stop thinking of wine. I don't know if it's cherry wine. I don't know if it's berry wine. But there's something about the wine. Do you drink wine? Uh, lots of it, yes. Okay. Are you ready? It's going to be weird. When you bury the St. Joseph, get yourself one of those wines. Now, I don't think I'm allowed to say the name. I'm going to say the name of the wine. It's Kim Crawford, I right? I think it's called Kim Crawford. And I oh, read the yes. My... I, <laughs> right? Do you know? Okay. I read about these people because that commercial, I thought, I got to find out who did that commercial. And I thought, I want to interview the woman that did the, it's right. Okay. It's not a woman, but I think the reason I brought it up is wine in the Italian traditions and the spiritual traditions, wine is an extremely spiritual. All of you AA people, just tell you, don't email me, get the bubbly non-alcoholic wine. But wine is ceremonial. Mm -hmm. So when you bury that, it's it has to be ceremonial. You got it? Do you understand what I'm saying? I got it. And don't worry, there's, there's plenty of women winemakers out here, so. Well, oh, I bet you. there are. <laughs> okay. Just just saying, don't hurt yourself with the berry, which means don't drink the bottle, but make this ceremony okay. when you put that in the ground. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Allison. Just remembered that. Jacob, who do we have next? Yeah, next up, we've got Sharon calling in from Fort Lauderdale. Hi there, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Hi. How How's are you? I'm good. How's the weather down there? Over there. So far, so good. We're supposed to have a cold front, and I'm looking forward to it. I heard that. I heard that. But my friend, Doc Martin, is in Pennsylvania right now and completely snowed in. And then yeah. here in the Pacific Northwest, where we're never supposed to get snow, we're getting snow Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But on another note, how can we help you? <laughs> oh, I was thinking lately. I have been looking back on my life with so many regrets, and it's not good to do that. And I am a senior citizen, and I don't know what it is, but I start thinking about people that I remember from the past, and why didn't I give that one a chance, and this and that. You know, it's, it's crazy to think that way, and yeah, it just I know. makes me sad. And, We're going to try to get you You know, you have to look forward and be happy with your life now. And I don't understand yeah. why these thoughts from the past are now bothering me. Okay, I guess there's because a life is becoming short. No, 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 no. There's a reason. And Mark's <laughs> going to try to help first. But but whenever you get a sign like that, whenever I get one, like today, it was about Linda's mom, Joan. And Mark's going to start because whenever you get something about a past or a regret, I would get mm -hmm. the money. It's connected to somebody Mark wants to bring through. Mark, right? Yeah. Um, Sharon, when you were talking, a female energy connected to you came through. And it's always interesting when a spirit overlays his or her energy on me because they give me physical sensations. And this is obviously a female energy because this woman had major problems with her breasts. 
and she may have had breast cancer or she may have had a mastectomy. It almost feels like a double mastectomy because I'm feeling I'm not going to go into why I feel that. Um, but there is a woman connected to you um, that was having a lot of problems with either breast cancer, which which would also be a, a reason for a double mastectomy. Does that make any sense to you? Is there anyone connected to you that had to undergo that, yeah. that type? Of, okay. Well, yeah. Right. She's alive. She's still alive. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Because the spirit connecting with us, is your mom in spirit, Sharon? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because mm -hmm. this yeah. is coming from your mom. She's talking about that friend, and is and, and is that a friend as opposed to a family member? The one that had the double mastectomy. She's a first cousin. First cousin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and and this is a very interesting message. Your mom is saying that. I'm paraphrasing what what's coming through is we must never take comfort in the suffering of others, but it can add perspective to your own situation. And I think that's what she's telling you is, yes, you're going through a lot, you're feeling regrets, but you have to take things into perspective. She's also explaining to me, the reason that you're reflecting on all this is not a form of self-punishment, it is not a form of punishment, and it is no form of, of what I would call penance. She said you're reflecting on this so that you can be the wise woman to help the younger generations connected to you, both familial and friends. This is all part of a mm -hmm. transformation that you're going through to become the matriarch of wisdom. And that's fascinating because what she's saying, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm a senior citizen. Well, guess what? You're evolving and growing until you're not breathing. And that's what she's transmitting. Dr. Pat, what's your take on this? Yeah, I think there are so many things that are connected here. And I just want to point a couple of them out. Mark, thank you for that. That's amazing. Here's what I've learned. It is amazing. It's amazing. Here's what I've learned both in my life and in school, and then in the school. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could take a look at what you're calling regrets and turn that into yes. honorings. See the word honoring, honoring. And it's not about honoring them. It's about honoring yourself and the path mm -hmm. that you've walked in this life because do we all have regrets? Well, we might, you know, I'm still regretting, yeah. to, I'm still regretting ice cream. I ate Sunday from my birthday, but what good is that going to do? I love the dang Sunday. I love that ice cream. It was very good. And by the way, it was black cherry. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, so I want to ask you this question. And, and again, I, you don't have to share it. Are you feeling guilt? Am I feeling what? Guilt. Guilt? Yeah, yeah do you I have some of that. Yeah. Okay, that's some that's, of okay. it's guilt and some of it's regret on not being more mature in decisions I made in life. Oh, so guilt and shame. Are you Catholic? Guilt, guilt and shame, <laughs> I'm right? Kidding. No, no, kidding, no, kidding, I'm, kidding. I'm not Catholic. I'm kidding. You don't have to be. You don't have to be Catholic to experience <laughs> guilt and shame. I mean, it happens. Look, I just, think, I just think that, you know, I had a lot so, of great opportunities in my yeah. life and yeah. I, I just let many of them go i was never ready whatever it is but you know for it to be a, a, annoying me and upsetting me now and going oh, you know to feel like you were stupid in life to do this or that you know just you know bingo. When, when you bingo when you grow up you're making a lot of mistakes bingo and i didn't uh, yeah yeah i wished uh, last week's football game when the Seahawks got killed, right? We can't, we can't go back mm -hmm. to wish. Here, here's what I want to advise you about all of this. Take, take to heart what Mark said, but in order for you to move forward, you have to really let go of the guilt and shame around your past. You know, we all have regrets. Do I have any regrets? You bet your butt. 
I mean, what is the, what is the regret that came up for me on my birthday? Freaking move to Seattle, right? And my friends and everybody yeah. here, like in 1990, said buy Starbucks stock, buy Microsoft stock. I said, what? Starbucks? Is that like regular coffee? Because I get regular <laughs> coffee in New York. What do you mean? Starbucks? What is that? Like, what? What? Now that's a regret. Um, but mm -hmm. I let go of it over time because you see that will, that has a hold on you. I joke about it now because I don't know Would I have the life I have now had I done that. Would I be able to be in service? Would I be here with Mark? You better get yourself fast forwarded to the present moment. And here's the best way to do it. You ready for this? Yeah. You need to look at everything in your life right now. And you need to immerse your brain all day long with, I am so thankful for my dog. I am so thankful for my house. I'm so thankful for that Mark mm -hmm. Anthony. I, and you need to get your brain in 120 miles per hour saying thank you over and over again. It will take mm -hmm. three days. It will take only three days if you do that. Three days. Okay, I will do more than I'm yeah. doing it now. I, I do appreciate many, many things. But, you know, it's a bad habit to look back and say, oh, you know, this would have been great. And why did you do that? Well, do it, there's you no... Know, there's and, if, if yes, I can if chime you stop in. Stop the why, though. To play the, can I just say, Mark? Yeah, no, go the ahead. The minute you go to why, there you oh go. my gosh, you are down. You're like Alice, and you have just gone <laughs> down a rabbit hole. And I'm telling you, the minute you go to what, why is the hook? I cannot stand that word. Why is the hook? There's only one answer to why that I'll ever accept. Do you want to know what it is? Yeah. Because, you know what that <laughs> right? Because when, you're, when your brain has to ask you, why did you do that, or why did you? Because the answer is because it's going to cut the thing off. It's yeah. like not going to entertain anymore. Mark, go ahead, go ahead, jump in, Mark. Um, yeah, I want to end with this because we had to get to other callers. <laughs> um, the Buddhists say there are no things such as mistakes. There's no such thing as a mistake. There are, however, lessons. And the thing about uh -huh. lessons is they will be repeated until they are learned. So you may be reflecting on these so that you will not repeat them. So we'll leave you with that because we got we got a yeah, whole lot yeah. of callers. So yeah, yeah. Many well, blessings. Thank you very much. All right. All yeah. right. Ha happy I, holidays. Happy holiday. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear. Mark, do we want let's keep going. Jacob. Let's keep going. Yeah. Love it. We've got Lisa calling in from New Mexico next. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hello. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Yes. How you doing? Hi. Hi, guys. Um, I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, good. I have a question. Okay. Um, the yes. past two years, I've been having a uh, Paranormal things like being touched, uh, feeling somebody sit on the bed, on my bed. Um, yeah. yeah. W welcome to my world, it, Lisa. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. People tell me this stuff. They're like, oh, my God, they're touching me. And it's like, yeah, yeah. That's what they do. All right. Go on, Lisa. Go ahead. <laughs> and I, I have an idea who it is, but I just I guess I need confirmation. Well, who do you think it is? Let's start there. Well, uh, my fiance, he passed away in um, right around when the pandemic started. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Um, I know this is going to sound really weird, but I got to give what I get. There's a guy coming through and, oh, God, I can't believe I'm about to say this on air. He keeps showing me nose hair. Now, I don't think there's a woman on planet Earth that finds nose hair <laughs> in a man attractive, but there has to be something. Did he have like nose hair that he was, uh, you're always telling him to trim because there's a guy, he thinks this is funny. All right, but does any of this make sense? Uh, yeah. Yes, it does. Okay, in what way? 
Remember, yeah. we're on air, so our, our audience well, needs to know why. Okay, go ahead. Well, he yeah, he did have a nose trimmer. <laughs> okay, all right. A hair, well, a hair nose that. trimmer, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a yes. <laughs> That's a yes. And I'm going to say this um, for the benefit of every man on planet Earth. There is no woman or man who finds nose or ear hair attractive, period. So get a nose hair trimmer, get an ear trimmer, keep yourself clean and groomed that way. All right. So this is your fiance right. and here's why. The reason I asked you why, who do you think this is? I felt it was a male energy and you said my fiance. So what does he do? He comes through and gives me the nose hair thing. And that immediately causes you to connect to this memory about him and that. Now he is coming through to you because of course he knows the sorrow that you're going through and he's reaching out. He wants you to know that death does not separate one from love. He keeps repeating this. Death does not separate one from love. Death does not separate one from love. Now he's switching tracks and he's giving me a whole bunch of chicken pot pies. Okay. What's up with chicken pot pies? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Did he love them? Did he hate them? But I'm getting like chicken yeah, pot I, pies. I, <laughs> yeah, he, that was one of his favorites. Okay. Now that or me, meatloaf. Right, hold on, hold on. Let's stick with the chicken pot pies. That was one of his favorites. When a spirit gives us a message of an explanatory or advisory nature, he came through, identified himself, of all things, with his nose hair, but then went to not even death can separate love and that he's reaching out to let you know right. this. And then th that's the advice and explanation. And then he followed it up with chicken pot pies, one of his favorites. The verifiable fact of chicken pot pie is how the spirit is letting you and I know that we have properly received and interpreted the message. And he wants to apologize for startling you. He said, but you're kind of getting used to it. So he's going to keep doing it. <laughs> and that's actually right. a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, he, it freaks me out sometimes because I sometimes I think it's the cat that jumped on the bed, but it's <laughs> well, not. Well, you, you can also ask a spirit. You can say, thank you so much for coming through, and I appreciate that, but I really do need to get some sleep, so come to me, um, you know, uh, either in my dreams or come to me when when, you know, when I don't need to sleep. So you've got to just set the parameters of the contact because <laughs> he's not there to haunt you or scare okay. you. He's coming through simply because he loves you. Hey, what is with strawberry jam? I'm tasting strawberry jam. Now, strawberries, this is interesting because in one of the previous readings, I got something about February. I associate strawberries and cherries with the month of February. So what this could mean, Lisa, is a significant birth, death, anniversary, well, or event connected to you or him within the month of February or something uh, about strawberry jam. Go ahead. <laughs> well, he did die at the end of February. That's it. Okay, that's he, it. So he, now he, we know this he, is him. Is that it? Well, what what else do you feel? Because yeah. your, your interpretation, it takes precedence. Was but, there something um, about strawberry was, jam? Uh, yeah, he, he liked all the jams. <laughs> okay. All right, Dr. Yeah. Pat, what's but, your take? What do you want to know from him? Because obviously there's something going on here, right? And so, this, look, whenever something like that happens to me, and because I know Mark, uh, I know that it's not coincidental. So you must be up to something. Right. That, right? Did I get you? I got gotcha. you. You must be up to something. I, I'm me or I, him is up to up to something. No, you. You're up uh, to something, and he's seeing it. Huh? I don't know what it is. Are you like too much sugar? Or what? 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 What is it? You don't have to tell me on air, but you know what I'm talking about. I think there has to be yeah. something that you might have done previously that. He didn't like so much, but I don't know. Or it worried him. Do you know what I mean? Are you with me? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, too, mu too, too much party and what do well, you do? Well, we with? did have a. What's that? Too much partying? Are you doing too much partying? What are you doing? 
oh no <laughs> <laughs> no um I'm 55, 56 here, going to be 56 in next week. And no, but, I don't do any partying, but um, I do worry you, about my son. That Okay, are you worried about your son? Tell me about that. Well, he's um, he's 39 years old. He's schizophrenic. And uh, okay. he's been using okay. street drugs. I think he's using okay. street drugs. Okay. But he, de he denies it to me. Okay. Uh, he's on a waiting list. To get an apartment but i'm not sure if i should let him go because i can't i don't know if it's a good idea to go let him live by himself okay so two things i want to say and i have a little of experience with this um every mother or every, every anyone that's close to somebody that either has used or they think is using you're going to worry but worry is not going to get you the solution so what you have to be able to do is step back for a minute. All right. You have to step back. I know you're worried. Uh -huh. how, how old was he? He's 39. And he's in your house, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah, and we're pretty crowded. You're pretty crowded. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to really talk about this on air, but I'm going to just give you an example. I just talked to a woman oh, maybe two weeks ago, almost the same situation. And, you know, she was worried and uh, she made her kid go get UAs all the time. But if your son is really willing to move out, is there really anything you can do to stop him? No, right? right? No, Yeah, that's right. So you've right. got to find peace of mind in your heart. You have to trust in, in what's going on. You're a good mom. You're worried. There comes a point in time where all you can do is say, honey, let me give you this 800 number. Honey, are you in a program? You know? And then for you, yeah. look up Al-Anon. Look up the Al-Anon. Al -Anon. Okay. That's right. That, okay. that That's, that's going to be a good one because you're going to need some help for yourself. So I, I don't know that this is the message, but when somebody sits close on a bed, it's a loving experience. It's loving and all I can think yeah. about is you have got to love yourself and get yourself the tools you need. And Al-Anon is one place to do it. Look it up. Al-Anon is for people that are involved with other people that are addicts or alcoholics, right? And I, I don't like to use that term, but I don't know how to put, I don't know how to dance around it. I know we're all getting more aware and we're not <laughs> saying I'm an addict, I'm an alcoholic, but I don't know how to skirt around it. But you, that's where you go. You go to yeah. Al-Anon, and those are the people okay. like you. And you can do it online. Okay. Okay, thank you for calling. Online. Thank okay, you. great. Thank okay. You. Right, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that right. was a loving sitting on the bed gesture, I think, Mark. Absolutely, it was. So, Jacob, who do we have next? We're on a roll here. Yeah, next up, we've got Tina calling in from Michigan. Hello there, Tina. Hi, Tina. Are you frostbitten? Hi. Hey. Hey How Tina. I'm here. Good. We're glad you're here. How I'm can we help you? Pardon? How can we help you? Hello. Hello. How can um, we help I you? I have a couple of things. I have a couple of things going on in my life and I want to know if I'm gonna have a positive outcome with both of them. Okay, so Mark is not a psychic psychic, but he can tap in to maybe somebody that's crossed okay. over to give you a little insight, right? Right. Mark, did yeah, I get that I'll, right? I'll, Am I saying the right yeah, thing, Mark? Yeah, Well, I'm okay. a medium, not a fortune teller, okay? So okay. I communicate with spirits. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you let uh, them yeah, this, tell the fortune. Yeah, and the thing is, um, Tina, you may not get what you're looking for. You're going to get what they know you need, all right? And sometimes that's different. Okay. All right, so I'm getting a okay. male energy. All right, all right, and, and here's uh, just for all the callers. When I'm connecting with a spirit, try not to interrupt me when I'm when I'm working with them because that can cause me to lose the connection with the spirit. Also, avoid going directly to no, 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 because it takes some time to reflect, and that's where Dr. Pat comes in because she's really good at helping people discern the messages. So I'm getting a male energy coming through. He feels like he very well could be on your generational level, Tina. So this could be a, um, a friend or boyfriend, cousin or brother. 
but in getting a male connected to you that's not in your generation who passed. And what I'm getting is this impact sensation to my head. Now, the impact sensation this could be head trauma, but this may also mean that he may have died very abruptly or suddenly. I'm also tasting a fair amount of blood. That doesn't always mean a bleed out. That could be an internal hemorrhage. But um, on this one, though, I am feeling this was most likely a trauma um, because I'm feeling, and, and please forgive me, um, I'm getting a shattering sensation to my head and then I'm tasting lots of blood. Is there a male connected to you that may have died in some type of accident, like a car accident, um, trauma, uh, died uh, very abruptly, very suddenly? It doesn't sound familiar to me at all. Oh, this guy, he is just on me big time. So this may not be somebody you're you're connecting with. Remember this, um, hold on. Let's see what he wants you to know. He said, you spend too much time worrying and thinking about things that you simply can't control. He said, that's why I died. Um, he said that because I lost control. And I think that this guy was in a motor vehicle and I and so I live in I live in the Florida. I've only driven on ice a couple times, and I've been in Colorado. But I feel he's in a vehicle, and also in the car spinning out of control. And he said, "Then you're going to figure out who this is at some point." Um, he may actually be an uncle because he's talking about uncle. It could be like a young uncle. And he said that you spend far too much of your time worrying about things you cannot control instead of focusing on those that you can. He also said that you have it, it, you you have this ability to see the big picture, which in one hand is good because you see like everything you got to do and that's coming up. He said the problem is you absorb all of that at once and it seems overwhelming instead of compartmentalizing and taking things one step at a time. So that's okay. what this spirit wants you to know. And he's not here to pick on you or to insult you. He's here to help you. Um, but I'm really okay. feeling a younger male could be connected to you, feels like through your dad's side of the family. Um, so I want you to think about this because I do readings for people all the time and they say, no, 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 no. And then I get an email a couple of days later. Oh, I talked to my mom and that was such and such person that you may not really have known very well. Dr. Pat, what's your take? I have a question for you. Um, there's a reason you called in. I'm curious to know what one of the reasons are. Is there something you're looking for? I'm curious. Answers to two two situations that I'm in right now. I'm facing okay. hip surgery next Friday. I want to okay. know how that's going to come out. Okay. And then the other thing is I'm facing the removal of some of my pets out of my home. Yep. And I want to know if I'm going to be able to keep them or if I have to give them all up. Okay. That, I knew it was something that really is wearing heavily on your heart right now. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not really getting a big hit about the surgery. I think that's going to be okay. So long as you do your homework mm -hmm. about that. Right. But when it comes to, you know, these, yeah. these creatures you love, that's really weighing very heavy on your heart, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. See, that's what this male energy was talking about with the big picture. Yeah. See, you're seeing all that because these these um these beings that will be removed from your home, they're going to be placed in in good hands, and so you're worrying so much about that. But what you need to be worrying about right now is yourself and your health. Yeah, um, exactly. You don't have to go into detail. The issue with your hip, was that through some type of trauma or is this a degenerative condition? And you don't have to go into extreme detail. Degenerative. Degenerative? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, what I'm getting from, and I don't, I'm, I still don't know who this guy is, but he is working with you. <laughs> he said that they caught it in time and it was actually better that it was a degenerative condition than a traumatically induced condition but he also says that okay you know you're trying too hard to control things that you can't which would make sense with the animals that are to be removed from your home also when you come out of surgery you need a lot less responsibility 
you don't need to be caring for a whole bunch of animals. You need to be caring for you. And so that may be why all of this is falling into place the way it is. Uh, Dr. Pat, what, what do you think? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I made a very odd connection to mark your reading. And I don't know if it's, pre it's a prediction, but when you come home from the hip surgery, I'm assuming you're getting a replacement. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. You're, you need to be un, un, unobstructed in your home. You need to not have things, cats under your feet. You understand what I'm saying? This is a serious thing. I, do. I, I got two knee replacements. So trust me to get my place in order. That took Linda to fly out here because I like stuff, but I played uh -huh. it down. I, I just poo pooed it. And I realized once it happened, oh my goodness, I had to move myself so close to the bathroom because I couldn't get over my stuff. Now you understand what Mark is saying and I'm saying. You need to get prepared for uh, the my surgery health. first. Right. You hear I me? have. My health is very clean as far as oh, tidy no, goes. No, you know, no, no not that. Not that. No. But when but, we have our well, little animal friends running around, do you see? Like when they're running around. Yeah. You're, you're not gonna you're not gonna tie them up. No. Right? They're running around. But I have you a have, but I have a walker that i use in the house right now it is it pales when you i don't know how to say this mark when you <laughs> when you come out of surgery you're going to have physical therapy and you're going to walk like you never walked before amazingly but there's a period of time you need to make your house safe right okay i don't know what that means but please start to think about this differently there is a relationship between these loved ones and your recovery. I literally uh -huh. had help here and I tripped on something because I didn't take this seriously and I almost blew my knee, knee replacement. And thank God Linda was here. So wow. just think about, it's not about being clean. You know, I'm clean too, but please focus on what Mark said. Focus on your hip first, get yes. prepared, get Get that done. You cannot have little creatures yep. running around under your feet when you're trying to go to the bathroom, okay? Yeah, imagine, and in fact, no, I know from not. my, per hold on, I know from my personal injury practice uh, when I was practicing oh. law that most elderly people who fracture their hips, mm -hmm. they trip over their little dogs. You know, the dog doesn't mean yeah. to, it's, you know, it's circling. And uh, yes, I know you have a walker and all that, but yeah. I I remember taking care of my dad when he was passing, he had the walker and, and, and if you come out of hip surgery and you fall on it, yeah, you yeah. think you have problems now. Yeah. Okay. Just, just yeah. take care. Yeah. Right. What, what we're both saying to you is you have to look at this. There is a connection between the two. I don't think there's a connection to worrying yeah. about your, your love animal friends. I, I don't think that's it. I think the message that Mark and I are trying to tell you is you need to do a little bit more due diligence and get your home absolutely safe so you can recover. The recovery is quick. It's quick. Physical therapy is quick, but don't huh? put yourself in any abnormal risk. Okay. And I'm trying not to. That's why I do. No, you're good. You're good. The walker. Thank the walker is good, but remember, this is different when you come out of this. They do not want you walking. I don't know uh, what your doctor is. You know what? We're Tina, not medical Tina, doctors. We're Tina, not medical doctors. The spirits, right. Dr. Pat and I can give you all the advice in the world. Oh, yeah. It's up to you to follow it. But let yeah. me tell you something. Right. Between being a lawyer and a psychic medium, I wish I had a dollar <laughs> for everyone who has come to me afterwards and said, I really wish I would have listened to you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh -huh. the walker's nice, but that's not what we're talking about. No. But that's up to you because uh, remember the other caller, there are no such thing as mistakes. There are only lessons. But let yeah. me tell you something. You're getting spirit intervention coming through to say, you get those animals out of there so that you can recover and then when you're all better you can turn your house into noah's ark if you want 
But for right now, <laughs> you take care of you. And I will leave that with yeah. you. That's it. Thank you so much for calling in. Please, you know, you now have a new pair of eyes, right? You have new lenses. Thank you for calling in. Wow, what a great show. Mark, thank you. Jacob, thank you. Mark, right? Yes, and everyone, we're going to be back next week. We know it's Christmas week, but guess what? People need the psychic in the dock yeah. even more than ever during this time of the year. And uh, we may have a bit of a surprise next week, too. So, But you'll have to find out about that when you tune in. Absolutely. Mark, thank you so much. Boy, this I don't know about you, but I worked up a sweat during this show. Yeah, this 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 one I, was, yeah, it felt like we were at the good. crisis this line. This good. was good. This was good. I loved our callers. Thank you all. And for those of you that have not been able to call in, we'll be back next time. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Doc with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife. Extraordinary problems, yeah, they do. They require extraordinary solutions. But step into the world of possibilities with us on The Psychic and the Doc. That's every Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're, we're also live face-to-face -face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio.